without curfew There was courage, boldness, fearlessness And now I'm blue But when I lean upon you And you lifted my hands Whoa. You make me stand and Eyes become open to what you see Brilliant stripes The darkness outside When I lean upon you, oh Lord, power quietens fear, and you lift in my hands. Oh, you make me stand. Eyes become. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. For me, it started as a little kid with the first word uttered, Mama. My words began to take shape. I grew, my words grew, my words grew. Chit chat, lines, lyrics, tweets. Aw, that's so sweet. Words began to make me, my world of words began to break me. Sisters, parents, exes, spouse kept assuring me. That's pointless, that's useless, that's hopeless. I'm, I'm worthless. The boss says it best. It's not personal, it's just business. But that's not true. Not true. Worthless? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a royal diadem in his hand. I am precious in his sight. For he knows the plans he has for me. Plans to perfect me. Words. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. It has the power of life and death.
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time in the Word of God with you and also spend time praying with you. Over the last few weeks, we've been uh, on the theme of words, uh, trying to understand from the Scriptures what God has taught us and instructed us on how to use our words, the importance of the words we speak, the power and the influence the words we speak have on our lives. We see that in Scripture, uh, God has taught us that we must agree with Him uh, uh, in the words we speak, that He wants His, His Word to be in our heart and in our mouth. Uh, he wants us to uh, make our confession, that is, uh, say things in alignment to His Word and to the covenant that He has with us. And uh, we also have seen from Scripture that faith is expressed and faith is released uh, through the words of our mouth. As we speak words of faith, we can expect things in our realm uh, to change, to uh, respond to words we speak. And uh, in this uh, closing, concluding uh, message in this series, I want to bring our attention to this fact that authority is also exercised through words. Now, in the natural realm, we understand that. Like the book of Ecclesiastes says, you know, where the word of a king is, there is power. That means when there's a king, he wants to get something done in his kingdom, what would he do? He would speak, he would say, he would command that something be done and it would be done. Authority, even in the natural realm, is expressed through words. Somebody in authority says something, and those under his authority will accept those words and do accordingly, carry out those words. So we understand that authority is exercised through words. So also in the realm of the spirit, in the spiritual realm, that authority in the spiritual realm is also exercised through words. And this is important for us as believers because although we are natural beings in the sense that we live in a natural world, we must understand we are spiritual beings and that we have a position, we have a standing in the spiritual realm. And that the natural world is also influenced and affected by the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. So we have authority in the realm of the spirit, in the spiritual realm, and our authority in the spiritual realm is also exercised by words. Spiritual transactions, spiritual things take place as we speak words based on our spiritual authority. When you look at the life of Jesus on the earth, how did he exercise spiritual authority over evil spirits? Now you can imagine uh, the people, they bring uh, those who were possessed and those who were tormented and troubled by evil spirits. Uh, they bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And how does Jesus exercise his authority? Obviously, he has authority over those evil spirits. But what does he do to deliver people, to set people free from evil spirits? What does he do? Uh, we'll just pick a few examples. Uh, in Matthew, the 8th chapter, uh, verse 16, it says, When evening had come, they brought to him, that is Jesus, many who were demon-possessed. He cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. How did Jesus get rid of evil spirits? How did Jesus minister healing to the sick? It tells us here he did it by words, by speaking words of authority. With authority, he commanded the unclean spirits to come out. He commanded the sick to be healed. So, even, so we learn here that spiritual authority is exercised through words of command, through speaking words, releasing words of authority. We see this again when Jesus exercised authority over nature. Uh, when there were the storms, the wind, and the waves, uh, Jesus spoke to them. He issued a command. He said, and this is, we see this in Luke the 8th chapter, verses 22 to 25. He commanded, he said, peace be still. He spoke to natural elements. He spoke to things in this realm. And it's the words that he spoke, words of command that released or carried the authority that he represented and that he walked in. And he was able to exercise authority through the words he spoke. Now, as believers, you and I, 
have been given spiritual authority. In the spiritual realm, we are in a place of authority. And we know that. The Bible teaches that to us. And I'll just refer to some verses there. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 17 through 19, Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. But I also say to you that you are Peter. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So Jesus is talking about the church, which is comprises of all believers, who, uh, of all people who have believed in the Lord Jesus. Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The gates of hell simply represent the power centers of hell, areas of demonic domination. These will not have a greater power or greater authority than the church. The church is superior. The church is greater. The church has greater authority than the powers of hell. And Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys represent authority. So the authority of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, has been vested in the church, in God's people. And with that authority, we can bind and we can lose on earth in accordance to what God binds and loses in heaven. Meaning we permit or we allow and, dis and disallow things on earth in accordance to what God allows and God disallows in heaven. So we have been vested with the authority of God's kingdom to carry out what God wants here on earth. But how do we exercise that authority? How do we bind and lose here on earth what God wants done? This is, of course, done the same way we see Jesus. We see Jesus exercising his authority through words of command. When we speak words of command, we exercise authority here on earth. In Luke 10 and verse 19, Jesus told his disciples, Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means hurt you. So he's saying, look, I'm giving you authority. I'm giving I'm delegating you kingdom authority, authority in my name. And you can trample, you can have mastery over all the power of the enemy, over everything the devil does. But how are we as believers going to exercise this authority? By issuing words of command. So, what must we do? We must learn to speak with authority. We must learn to speak or issue words of command in the name of Jesus. In Luke 10 and verse 17, the disciples came back to Jesus and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us in your name. So we are using your name. That means we are walking or carrying the authority you've given to us in your name. Uh, we are exercising that authority that comes through your name, the delegated authority you've given us. But how are they going to do it? They're going to issue commands in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, we command. We command unclean spirits. We command sickness and disease. We command natural elements or things in the natural realm. So authority is exercised through the words we speak. In dealing with evil spirits, we must learn to speak with authority. Speak in the name of Jesus. James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So we submit to God. We are walking in submission or under God's authority. That's how we receive our authority because we are submitted to God. And then he says, resist the devil. Now, how do you resist the devil? By speaking words of command, by speaking words of resistance, by speaking words that refuse to accept what the devil is doing, by speaking words that refuse to grant permission to the devil, by speaking words that dismantle and destroy uh, what the devil is doing or has done. So we issue words of command. We speak with authority. And that's how we resist or we put up resistance against the devil by speaking with authority. So learn to do that. You learn to speak in Jesus' name. Say, devil, I resist you. You unclean spirit, I command you to come out. You spirit of infirmity, I command you to go. 
your spirit that's causing confusion. I bind you. That means I am preventing you from being active in this situation. So you speak to evil spirits. You speak to a spirit of fear, a doubt, uncleanness, whatever the, uh, the source of that uh, problem is. You speak to spirit. Typically, we, we call the spirit by the condition that is being observed, by the condition that's being manifested. So you call the spirit by that name and you, you command it. You tell it to leave. You take authority over situations, over circumstances. You speak to it. You say, in Jesus' name, I command confusion to stop. In Jesus' name, I command uh, this disturbance to stop. Or in Jesus' name, I command provision to be released. In Jesus' name, I command supply to come. You're speaking words of authority into this natural realm, whether it's against evil spirits, whether it's against in, into your circumstances, into your situations, uh, into your body, or when you're ministering to other people, you speak over their lives. You have the authority that God has given you, and you exercise that authority by releasing words of command. Now just think about this. The Bible says that as believers, you and I are seated at the right hand of God. We are seated uh, with Christ Jesus in heavenly realms. Why would God put us there? Because He's put us uh, to give us that place of authority. So in the realm of the Spirit, we are in a place of authority, seated with Jesus in heavenly realms. And that authority, we bring that authority into our world, into our realm. And we can exercise it by speaking words of authority. In Revelation, the 12th chapter, and verse 11, the Bible says, And they overcame him, that is the adversary, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. So this verse is telling us how people of God overcome the enemy, that is the devil. How do they do it? By the blood of the Lamb. That means by the completed work of Christ on the cross, by what Jesus did for us on the cross. On the cross, He defeated the devil. On the cross, He rendered the enemy powerless. On the cross, the Bible says He stripped them of all of their power. So Jesus completed the, work on the, completed the work on the cross. That's the blood of the Lamb, what the blood of Jesus has done for us, redeemed us, set us free, gives us authority and dominion over the enemy. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now they have to speak. They have to declare with their mouth something. They have to testify what the blood of the Lamb has done for them. They have to testify the finished work of Christ on the cross. So how do we overcome? How do we have authority and dominion over the enemy? It's through the cross of Jesus, but it includes us testifying, us saying with our mouth what Christ has completed for us on the cross. This is a very important truth. You know, as believers, God has put us in a place of authority. He has given us authority through the finished work of the cross to the name of Jesus, by making us to be seated at His right hand in the heavenly realms. He's given us that authority, but we must exercise authority in our realm. We must exercise authority over evil spirits and what they're doing, over situations and circumstances that we need to see changed. We must exercise authority. And the way we do it is by issuing words of command, by speaking with authority releasing those words. I want to close with this verse in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul tells Timothy, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, or the prophecies that were already spoken over your life, that by them you may wage the good warfare. He's saying, Timothy, I want to remind you about the prophecies that were spoken over your life. Words of prophecy. That means People around him uh, prophesied over his life. They gave, them, gave him prophecies. Paul is saying, you take those words so that by these prophecies, I want you to wage a good warfare. Obviously, this warfare is against the enemy. This warfare is against spiritual forces, against evil spirits that are, uh, that are acting. And so Paul is telling Timothy, take the prophecies and use these prophecies to fight against the enemy. That means you begin to declare what was prophesied over your life 
and you use those prophecies in your spiritual combat against the enemy. So, part of us, uh, part of our declaration, part of our engaging against the enemy is speaking words of command, declaring what God has said to us, testifying what, the, what Christ has completed for us on the cross, as well as speaking the prophecies that have been spoken over our lives. So if a, a man of God, man or woman of God has come and given you a word of prophecy concerning something that God says will come to pass in your life or God says he's about to do, you know, don't just take those prophecies and write them down and forget them and leave them somewhere. But you take those prophets and you begin to speak it. You wage a good warfare. You use those prophecies in combat against the enemy. In your fight against the enemy, as you press in to what God has said is yours, you are exercising your authority to see those prophecies fulfilled in your life. So, our words over the course of this series, over these different messages that we've brought to you and me, uh, on, on the power of our, of our words, we've seen very clearly from Scripture that God has given us instructions on how to use our words wisely, correctly, on the impact our words have over our lives, that words affect us, it affects our entire person. Our words shape our life, it shapes the course of our lives, it shapes our future. Our words can also bring blessing to other people. We can edify or build up other people. We can bring encouragement into, into their lives, speak grace into their lives. They've also seen that words must be used, must be in agreement with His Word. Our words, we must declare His promises as we hold on to His Word. We exercise faith by the words we speak. And we also exercise authority by the words we speak. Our words express the authority we now we carry it, which, which has been given to us. And so we exercise that authority over evil spirits, over circumstances, over situations. In our spiritual combat, we exercise authority by speaking words of command. I want to encourage you. Be very intentional about the use of your words. Don't be casual. Uh, don't use your words without thought, uh, serious consideration. Think about your words. Use your words wisely. God's designed it that way, that our words will shape our life. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. When you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And we want to take some time just to pray together before we close. I, I want to pray God's grace over your life, that you will take uh, this entire series that we've uh, journeyed through about our words and begin to use them and begin to see things happen in your life as you, by faith, declare God's word over your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the instruction given to us in your holy word, in the scriptures. Father, I pray for grace upon everyone uh, who's heard these messages. I pray that they will learn how to use words correctly uh, to bring life, blessing, goodness, to see the promises fulfilled, to see a victory over situations and circumstances, to see things change in their life, that they will exercise their faith, they will exercise their authority, God, that you would give them the grace to do this and just to live this way, knowing that every word they speak counts. It matters. We speak your blessing, Father, on each one listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life in Jesus' name. 
It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.